Hey there crew, we're going to uh, work with our clay today and I'm just going to show you quick some Pueblo stories and storytellers. So I have a few books and I know uh, in the classroom we look at some of them too um, and inside you could actually read um, some of the history of it and there's Helen Cordero's uh, first ever storyteller and then it talks about the process and then there are different stories inside from actual Pueblo people and when they pass the stories down they've created sculptures and there's all sorts of fun examples in there too uh, and then the same symbols that were uh, in the slideshow um, are also uh, here as well and I kind of pass those out and you can look through those too when you're in class um, if you're at home, you can kind of uh, just keep looking through the slideshow video that I did. You can also uh, use your Chromebook to look up different Pueblo uh, designs, Pueblo symbols, Pueblo examples, even Pueblo stories if you want to read some of them. So, that being said, use your resources there. Also, we have our notes and our sketchbook. So I'm just going to go through some of the clay notes really quickly uh, before we get to the actual clay itself. So, you may remember from the past, a pinch pot is a simple form created by making an opening in a ball of clay with your thumb and then pinching and pressing um, all the way around to make a bowl shape. You might utilize that in your Pueblo Storyteller as well. Our scratch and attach, I'm going to show you again in a second, but in order to get pieces of clay to stick together, you got to make texture marks on both pieces with a tool, think crisscross applesauce or a tic-tac-toe board, then you add water to each piece and that acts as the glue. So you scratch with the tool, you attach with the water, and you smooth out uh, with your finger or thumb or even another tool uh, to get the two pieces to look like one piece and also stick together. Because if you don't do that, it's going to fall apart, maybe even crumble, and you'll be gluing it for a long, long time. Uh, a relief sculpture is a type of sculpture which is flat on one side and built up three-dimensionally on the other side. So one side is flat like a pancake or a slab and then the other side you build up. So you may uh, utilize that as well. Then of course we're all using symbols and we talked about this in our symbolic and surreal self-portrait in the past but a symbol is an image used to represent something else or something bigger. So an example could be a white rose reminds me of my grandma because uh, she loved white roses or that a bird represents my love of travel and flying around the world because guess what? Birds fly. Not all birds but most birds fly. So travel flying around the world. Uh, then if you go here uh, the Pueblo are Native Americans in the southwest United States like New Mexico and Arizona you probably remember that from my other video. You probably remember that from social studies. So remember the Pueblo people. And of course our Pueblo storytellers are a part of the Pueblo culture that passes stories down from different generations through objects made of clay. So clay is a big part of the Pueblo culture. That's why we're using it too. Uh, they tell stories through their symbols and pictures. The storyteller's mouth, if you remember, is always open, while the listeners have their mouths closed, voice level zero. The storyteller is larger than the listeners as well. Think of it as the main character. So, not all of you have uh, clay or access to clay. I use Amico Air Dry Clay in the classroom. Uh, I think it's the most like regular clay. Uh, but you don't need a kiln or oven or anything. You can just uh, let it dry out in the air when you're all finished. Until you're finished, though, I like to use a nice Ziploc baggie to keep it inside. And I keep uh, some water on it, too. I kind of sprinkle it, give it a little bath. Because if you don't put water on it or put it in a bag, it'll dry out. And you cannot attach and scratch, or scratch and attach uh, more details and stuff like that. You would only be able to glue more pieces on so if you want it to all work together as a clay sculpture, keep it in the bag until the next time you work. Um, and this is a multi-step process and multi-class uh, project, so keep that in mind. Um, if you don't have the clay, and like I said, Amico Air Dry is awesome. There's also a Crayola brand 
Um, you could also just use modeling clay. It would not dry out and you wouldn't really be able to paint it, but you could make more sculptures after you make your Pueblo. And I buy modeling clay in the three primary colors, and then if you remember my tubs in the classroom, it all ends up being a brownish uh, gray because everybody mixes those primaries. So you can get it in any color, but if you mix it all together, you get that natural clay look. Uh, you could also use Sculpey and bake that in the oven. You could also just use other uh, found objects or tools to sculpt with. If you don't want to sculpt and you're an online learner, you could also just draw it uh, or paint it and make it a two-dimensional storyteller and listener. Um, we're going to start with the regular clay. I'm going to take a piece off my chunk and the body, the main form is a cylinder. So first we make a sphere. Always roll your clay into a ball to get it nice and smooth before you make a different shape. So I've made it kind of a nice smooth sphere. Now I want to make a cylinder. So I kind of squish it and roll it in my hand like you're making a coil or a snake. So we don't want the body to be too thick or too thin, just right. So if I rolled it on the table as well, with one hand, the heel of my hand, uh, that's a little too thin, or, uh, well this one could be just right, but if you made it too thin, and it was like a snake, you wouldn't be able to hold a head or arms or legs or any listeners, it would be too fragile and break. So, you don't want it too thick, not too thin. So if it's just right and you like the thickness, then you gotta make it flat on the top and the bottom. So the way I make it flat is a little tappy tap tap. So I just tap 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 to make it flat on that side. Tap tap tap, make it flat on that side. Perfect. So now I have a cylinder and it can stand up on its own. All right. To uh, make a head, you would use some more of your clay and you could make a sphere. So just like I did in the beginning, you roll it into a ball to make your sphere, and you could have a very round spherical head, or you could roll it in your hand just a little bit to make more of an ovalish shape or egg shape. And then here's where you do scratch and attach. So you need to have uh, a toothpick or a pin tool, needle tool, uh, anything you can scratch with, even a plastic fork or um, a toothpick. Toothpicks actually work really great. So I'm going to show you. You got to scratch, scratch, scratch on both pieces. So I did some horizontal and verticals to kind of make a checkerboard. I also have to do that on the bottom of the piece I'm attaching. You can't just do it to one. You got to do it to both. You can't pick favorites. So once you've done the tic-tac-toe board or checkerboard on both pieces, that's texture marks with a tool, you can then use your finger in a little uh, container of water to put water on both. So you just kind of tappy tap water on both and then gently smooth it on and now it's attached. Then, since that's kind of an odd uh, connection, I'm not gonna be able to get my finger in there to smooth it out. I'm gonna use a tool. So I'm actually gonna dip the end of this tool uh, into the water and I can kind of smooth that out so that instead of look, looking like two pieces, it'll look more like one. And now that head is attached and it still stands on its own. Awesome. Next, you can add legs and arms and other attachments. So for arms and legs, you could just uh, do more cylinders, more tubes and scratch and attach. I'm gonna show you an arm um, if it was to be holding something, you might want to curve it in front. If you want it just sticking out, you could do it like that. But I'm going to just show you real quick. I roll out an arm. I'm going to kind of press one end into a hand shape so you can start to form uh, like a hand. I can even, you could scratch and attach a thumb or you could just kind of pinch and press uh, existing there. And I've almost made a mitten uh, at the end for kind of an arm. If you want uh, fingers, you could use your texture tool, like a toothpick or the needle tool, and you could make some lines for fingers, or you could pinch them apart and make fingers as well. I might make the wrist a little thinner. All right, so to attach, I'm going to press the end so it's flat. 
or you could tappy tap tap on the table because it's it would be too hard to just attach it like that. I'm going to make it flat so it will kind of press on the side there. So again, like I said before, scratch, 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 crisscross, and you got to do it on both pieces. Don't forget to do it on both. And then tappy tap with a little water on both pieces so it will stick like glue. And then I just gently push and now I'm going to show you how you can smooth it out with your fingers. So right now it looks like two pieces. All right, We want it to look like one. So I'm going to dip my finger in the water. I'm going to smooth it out. I'm going to press it. This would be like where the shoulder uh, meets the body. You don't see a big clumsy attachment there. It's a nice smooth transition. So that's what we want to do with our clay as well. Also if you have any rough spots like this I'm going kind of fast, so I kind of had a rough spot there. You could just use a wet finger to smooth that out too, so it's not a crease in the arm or a rough spot. If it's ever rough, just use a little wet finger or wet tool to smooth it out. Smooth as a baby's butt, I like to say. So, you could be holding something with that arm. Uh, I'll show you the little pinch pot method if you want it to be holding like a bowl of fruit like my grandma's was. So again, roll it into a ball, always first. Then you can use your thumb to push in the center, and you can pinch and press all the way around. So the thumb stays in the middle, fingers on the outside, because you want to pinch and press and make it even. You don't want it too thick or too thin, so it would break, and you have a little pop. And then you could scratch and attach that uh, in their arm or hand or whatever you want, or it could be uh, flattened at the bottom, tappy tap tap. You could scratch and attach, have it sitting on the head, uh, you could even have a listener in that bowl, or a listener in the arms, uh, or attached to the side. Remember, it is up to you. You're the boss uh, of your artwork. You use your creative uh, energy and abilities. So, if you want to do a slab as well, perhaps you have some extra clay, some extra time. I'm going to show our in-person friends they can make a relief uh, ornamento, ornament if you want. So you could press it kind of like a hamburger. Then you could roll it out flat with a rolling pin or you could just continue pressing with your hand to make it uh, a pancake. So burger to pancake. Then you want to always make sure you can lift it up off your mat. If you push too hard with your uh, rolling pin, it would stick, it would get too thin, it would break. Not what you want. Um, for a relief ornament, you could just draw into it with like your toothpick tool. So if you want, you could just draw right on top to add texture uh, or details or whatever you want. If you wanted it to be like a face or something, you could draw right into it. Or you could sculpt and uh, scratch and attach. The beauty of drawing on first, if you don't like it, just erase it with a wet finger. Boom. I'm changing my mind. I'm erasing that. So, let's say I want to do like an owl or something, or a bird. I could sculpt a little beak, and like the definition in our sketchbook, it's flat on one side, the back, and it's going to be built up on the front. So, if I create a beak of some kind with a form, I could tappy tap tap, make it flat on the back, scratch, 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 attach, attach, attach and smooth out. Scratch, attach, smooth out no matter what. And then I could continue to add uh, texture with like feathers uh, or details. I can make eyes, the little like horns, like that. It could be any kind of relief sculpture or tile. If you want it to be an ornament, remember you gotta poke a hole in the top. So when it's laying flat on the table, you could uh, create a hole with your pin tool. You poke it through, not too close to the edge. Go around and around and around. And then, like I always say, you gotta make sure you can see through. So, look at something off in the distance through the hole. If you can see it, I can see the pin tool uh, through the hole, so boom. I know it's good enough. Once this dries and it's then painted and then dried again, I could use yarn or string or fishing line to go through that hole, tie a knot at the top, and it could be 
a moving sculpture, a hanging moving sculpture like a mobile, or it could be an ornament of some kind uh, as well. So always remember to use your tools to scratch, attach, and smooth out. Uh, you can sculpt symbols, you can carve symbols, or you could wait till it's dry and paint the symbols. So try to make it three-dimensional. If you don't have three-dimensional materials, you could always just paint or draw your storyteller uh, and sculpture that way. Um, also, another idea for a cylinder toilet paper tube, uh, if you have empties at home, you could use those as a perfect sculpture or a paper towel would be a lot taller. Uh, you could do that too. If you use a paper towel for the storyteller, maybe the listener could be toilet paper tubes because they're shorter. You could think about that. That could be creative. Also, uh, one last thing. If you are uh, doing your storyteller, you could, um, because their mouth is open, you could carve out a mouth that's open with a tool, uh, or you could just paint it open when it's dry. So think about those things uh, as well, and just kind of have fun with it. So again, connect to your culture, connect to the Pueblo culture, and just have fun using your amazing techniques and abilities and new learning. Adios amigos.